Okay, Herc. Don't answer of the question, these... Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> of these uh, bounce back performances, as we're calling them, of course, uh, following the US and its struggles during the international break, uh, which player needed it the most? Yeah. It's Ricardo Pepe, and not just because that news or that reporter or <laughs> that sideline reporter there uh, coursed him into some crazy answers. That you, you don't answer the question. You don't don't say how many goals you want to score. It's about the team. Remember. That. Hey, you like that confidence though? Double digits. I like to hear it from Ricardo Pepe. I like to see it. I don't like to hear it. Talk is cheap. Um, but it's Ricardo Pepe because of who Ricardo Pepe was for this U.S. men's national team and because he's on the outside looking in mm. if we're going on. Who's going to the World Cup based on merit? Based on merit, at least in Greg Berhalter's eyes, he should go with who? Jesus Ferreira because he loves Jesus Ferreira because Jesus Ferreira has been scoring goals. He should go with Josh Sargent because Josh Sargent is that perfect balance of what Berhalter is looking for and also productivity and also what the fans want. So you would assume he's there. And then Jordan Peefock, I mean, can you really keep a player that productive off the final list? So right now, it's Ricardo Pepe who's on the outside looking in. So in this very abysmal, very disappointing two-game window that he had with the U.S. men's national team, when he was given a chance, not only did he barely touch the ball, but he didn't have one chance. Hmm. He didn't have one opportunity to strike on goal. So when you do, so when you are away, you have to hey, make... Not like the other guys did. Not like the other guys had well, a whole lot of chances. Jesus Ferreira was on the field for like five minutes in the second okay. game and had a chance. Whether he made it or not, he got on the ball and had a chance. Okay. okay. There's something to be said about that. So if you're Ricardo Pepe, you have to feel it's out of sight, out of mind. What can I do to latch on into the mind of Greg Berhalter and this coaching tree, this, this coaching network here? Because it doesn't matter how the fans feel. It doesn't matter... What I think, it's what that guy thinks. So it can't be out of sight, out of the mind. Did out you did mind. you feel like the uh, the interviewer there was almost like disrespecting the goal a little bit? No, 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 not at all. It wasn't a little bit. All of it. Yeah. He disrespected okay. all of it. So I actually I actually think it's a great, great goal. To your point about a golazo, remember there was a, a comment from Greg Burhalter during the last international break that stood out to me about Ricardo Pepe. He said, he we think that Ricardo Pepe can dominate. The Dutch League. Now, remember, Greg Berhalter has gotten in trouble for using the word dominate uh, in a wrong or maybe premature moment before. Uh, but he said that about Ricardo Pepe when Ricardo Pepe had not done that yet. And this was the type of goal that maybe it's not skill domination, but I mean, physically, he dominated his opponent. He made a goal out of nothing. To me, that is a guy who was dominating his opponent. So I, I, I love Ricardo Pepe, the shout here. The one thing I would say is, he went 11 months without scoring a goal, Herc. So how important can a goal be? Like, clearly, well, 11 months without two and scoring two. one. It's now 2-2. Two and two. Assist and two goals, and it keeps on growing. He dominated in the Greg Berhalter style. Mm. He scored a goal, but they didn't win. Okay. Uh, look, 11 months without a goal didn't keep him out of the team. I'm not going to go too crazy saying that, uh, that this goal certainly uh, punches his ticket for Qatar. No. So I'm going to say the person that needed the bounce back game the most, uh, and actually who I think took advantage of their opportunity the most is Christian Pulisic. Now, as we said, it wasn't a big opportunity, right? He came on as an 84th minute sub for Chelsea, but he gets an assist. Now, just like people might say, oh, well, the goal from Ricardo Pepe was a scrappy one. It was an ugly one. I know there are some people that might say, oh, this assist for Christian Pulisic isn't all that much because it is Conor Gallagher who hits a worldie and we'll fully acknowledge that. But this is a great, great play from Christian Pulisic and it is exactly, Herc, exactly why he's on the field, because he can drive it a defense when they're packed in, he can break that defense down, and in this case, and he doesn't always do it, and maybe this is a, a knock against Pulisic at the national team level, I, I know I've heard it from some Chelsea fans that he holds onto the ball too long, here he releases it just in the nick of time, he makes a huge play, and I think it proves to Graham Potter that this guy can make the difference in a game where you need somebody off the bench he proves it. So to me, uh, in terms of what it means to his club future, it's a huge six-minute cameo with a game-winning assist for Christian Pulisic. I think this was a huge weekend for Christian Pulisic as far as his future perk at Chelsea is concerned. Yeah, listen, nobody's putting into question whether Christian Pulisic is going to go to the World Cup or not. In fact, all those sons, Ricardo Pepe, are pretty much lockdown starters for the U.S. men's national team. That's not in question here, but who needed this? And I think mm. you may be on to something because if you look at where he was, even before getting on the field, it was 85, 86 minutes, and he's looking up, when am I going to get on? 
He finally gets on and, like you said, draws the defenders in, does what Christian Pulisic needs to do, and he's part of something. Hmm. So it's going to make Graham Porter think. It's going to make him think, what do I need to do to get this kid on the field if he's going to produce things that make goals happen? As insignificant or significant as you want, if you're on the field when goals are happening, that's an important thing. It's the first of many, and it only takes one to get things going. And plenty of opportunities coming up. This coming week is the first of six in a row where Chelsea have two games. So for each of the next six weeks, there's plenty of minutes to go around. First up, by the way, Chelsea against AC Milan. Maybe we get a little Christian Pulisic against Serginho Dest one-on-one -on -one showdown. Calabria's injured. Showdown. Uh, wouldn't that be fascinating in the Champions League? Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.